It's a glorious morning in Nebraska, folks. Got some cows up on the hill. So let's do a garden tour. Kelly got a bunch of greens harvested out of the garden. Some kale, and spinach, lettuce. It's the only thing we're getting right now because it's still early on. We got some much needed moisture yesterday morning early. We got uh, right at an inch of rain in just a couple hours. But it doesn't stick around here in Nebraska. The water doesn't even hardly puddle because of the, the nice sandy soil we have here. And we got real good drainage. Good morning, cat. So let's start you off in the greenhouse. We got some of our later crops started here. Some cauliflower, some broccoli, some bok choy, and even some artichokes. Which I recently learned you can grow in Nebraska as an annual. Where it's California we grew the artichokes as perennial we got some other stuff planted over here we got some lettuces that we're gonna plant out soon we have still have some backup tomatoes over here and then some rhubarb we're going to plant because the rhubarb that we had here on the property was in a really bad location I transplanted the red rhubarb but the green rhubarb I think I'm just going to uh, get rid of because I don't care for the color or the, the flavor of the green rhubarb. So I've got some of this uh, called Canada Red rhubarb. So we're going to start that. Kelly has planted some lavender out here in one of our lick tubs. Uh, we really enjoy lavender in some of our baking items that we do. It's really good. Uh, it's an edible variety of lavender. We really enjoy that. We still have our two pluot trees that we acquired from California from my friend Matt. Um, I'm letting the root ball get real established in these before we transplant these out. We'll probably do it in the fall just before winter and that way they'll get plenty of moisture over the winter. After our late freeze that burnt our grapevines back, they have came back very nicely. And we're going to have plenty of canes to um, train up onto our trellis up here on top. Uh, very, very healthy looking plants. Three different varieties. We have Concord grape, uh, Catalpa, and a red Swinson grape. But uh, we'll train these canes to go along as we go. We let them get a little bit uh, older and tougher because if you bend these small canes, and when they're young, they will break off. I'll show you down here because this one needs to go. If you just barely move that, it, see it comes right off. So we don't want to do that with these up here. We'll let them get a little more woody before we start training them around. But uh, the Concord down here is already showing some grapes. But we'll run a cane this way and a cane that way. And it'll be real nice. The chickens are out and active already this morning. You've heard cat crowing over here. They really love the uh, outdoor chicken run out here. Cat's been pretty good with that crow now. You can see the chickens using their feeder over there. Working real nice. They can't drag the feed out onto the ground, so... It's saving quite a bit of feed. Breakfast time and the chickens. Now good news with the chickens is we've started uh, receiving eggs. So Kelly's collecting a couple eggs a day, a day right now. They've just started and maybe just one bird that's laying. So, but that's good news. Uh, Chickens are going to start paying their way around here. Uh, thank you, cat. Got to get my strip spray uh, redone because we're starting to get some weeds, especially down here where we've got some water. Uh, 
the uh, lambs quarter down there is going pretty crazy so we need to get that knocked back down we had some good news here with our Bartlett pear that I thought was toast it's actually started growing again right here uh, right above the graft joint so that is a true uh, Bartlett pear if it was growing from below the graft, that would be some suckers, and you never know what rootstock they use. But we can come back later and clip this old dead thing off, and we're going to have a nice tree out of this Bartlett pear now. Now this peach tree here that was showing some leafing out that I had uh, showed some promise. I'm starting to wonder whether this thing's going to leaf out or not. These leaves just have not gone beyond this point. I haven't given up hope yet, but this would be the third tree that uh, didn't make it. Kind of disappointing, but fruit trees can be hard to get going. But we'll keep trying until we get this orchard established. Still no sign of apples on either of these two smaller apple trees. So I'm thinking the weather was not uh, ideal for apples this year. Uh, here in Nebraska, you don't always get the fruit. It depends on the weather year. So it'll be hit and miss uh, when we get fruit. Last year, these two smaller trees didn't give fruit, but the two large trees did. I have yet to see any apples on those either, but let's go check them out. Looks like we got a volunteer pumpkin over here on the compost pile. We put our uh, Halloween pumpkins out here. I smashed them up and composted them. So this doesn't get any water from any of the irrigation, but still going strong over here. Still no apples showing, even on the sunny side of the tree. This is the morning side of the tree, which uh, if you've got problems with weather, usually the morning side sometimes actually will have some fruit, whereas the far side that doesn't get the sun early won't, but uh, I don't see any over here either. No luck on this tree as well. Luckily we got a bumper crop last year and I was able to put a lot of apples away. Because it doesn't look like we're going to get them this year. Our asparagus out here is just about panned out. Some of this is going to go to seed now. This is not the best spot for the asparagus but uh, we had no idea this asparagus was even here when we uh, put the garden back up the previous owner had a garden in this area but when they sold the property they took all the cattle panels and everything to auction so we had to rebuild this area so if we knew this asparagus was here we might have planned around it a little better but uh, it is far enough away from the fence where I can get the mower around here when we mow. But uh, we're going to have to do something with the weeds here at least next year. So probably when this dies back and goes dormant, we may put this whole area right here covered in mulch to keep the weeds from coming back next year after all this is cut down. And uh, the asparagus will push right up through that mulch. Boy, Cat is awfully talkative this morning, isn't he? We bush hogged all of this the other day. Got all the weeds down out here and in the back and uh, down below by the wildflowers down there. I'm waiting for all the wildflowers to go to seed so I can mow the rest of that. So with that moisture we got yesterday, I don't really want to walk out here. It's going to be a little bit muddy. But uh, you can see things are starting to grow out here in the garden. Uh, have some issues with seed germination this year. It's been pretty crazy. Uh, I had to replant some of the zucchini. I had to replant, this is like replants right here, of the yellow zucchini. But uh, our beans down here are doing really well. They'll be up on this trellis pretty soon. They're already starting to climb. We have our peas over here that uh, are starting to climb up on that trellis. Uh, we have some cabbages plant in here that are doing okay. We got some squashes over here 
a Blue Hubbard squash and a Buttercup squash. And one other type of squash I can't remember, but you can see that they're growing nicely. And our tomatoes are slow to get going this year for some reason. I do not know why. Um, it could be they had some early blight because we had those torrential rainstorms right after they were planted and they were right next to the ground. They were smaller plants because I planted them deep like you would do with tomatoes. And they got a lot of early blight. I've been trimming the lower uh, leaf sets off because they had that blight and the upper parts of the tomatoes are doing okay. I don't know if you can see those. There's one right there. So they're probably about eight inches off the ground now. And as they grow, we'll weave them through that cattle panel. But they're off to a slow start. If you remember, we were about a month late starting the garden because of the unseasonably cold weather we had. So we're about a month behind all y'all other places. Uh, we ordered the uh, higher quality pennant flags and we have those installed. These actually have some cordage inside the, uh, the line that they're all hanging on. So they're a lot tougher than the ones that we had. And we ordered them to go all the way around 300 feet worth. But they're, do they're working nicely. They keep the deer out. We didn't get one deer in the garden last year. So it is working. This is the green rhubarb. Again, not in an ideal place. I mowed this down the other day because it was getting... Uh, kind of old so we'll be getting new shoots of the green rhubarb coming back up I need to mow around the perimeter out here weeds are getting taller out here now I don't use any herbicides in the garden but I do a mow strip right along the fence which looks like I'm about ready to need to do that again so it just gives me about an 8 inch wide strip because uh, the mower can't get right up against the fence. We could get there with a weed eater, but it's a lot easier if you create a mow strip around the outside of the garden, which we're going to get that taken care of. Now you can see these last two zucchini down here. These have been replanted twice, and they're still not popping up. This one here did, though. But I think we'll have plenty of zucchini because they, they grow really well and produce really well. So I'll probably give up on these two hills here. You never know. Maybe I'll go get some more seed and throw them in there. Our cantaloupe over here, uh, I planted that three times as well. This last third time I just carpet bombed that thing and put all the rest of the seed I had in the package in that hole. And I finally got two of them to sprout. So... I don't know what's with the seeds this year. I've never had this problem before. I don't know because of COVID if they've repackaged all their old seed or what. But uh, some of it's just not germinating. We have our habanero peppers here on this end. They've got past their transplant shock and now they're starting to grow. Uh, like I said, there's some cabbages down here in the middle. And we have some watermelon here. Uh, some of those had to be replanted as well, but uh, they have sprouted. We'll see how they do. And again, this is our tomato row here. You can see our tomatoes are about 8 to 10 inches tall. But uh, with the hot weather coming up, they're going to really take off and, and start growing exponentially. Now, in these two, the ends of these two rows here, I had some uh, sweet bell peppers planted here. And with those torrential rains we got, I don't normally like planting out uh, pepper seed because it's so small and it, you only plant them like a quarter inch deep. But when we got that torrential rain, it washed a bunch of extra dirt down in on top of the seeds. And so they never, never germinated. And then same thing over here with the onions. The rain covered up, covered them up with about an inch of dirt and uh, crusted over and then they're, they're not gonna sprout. 
But we got some jalapenos down there. Let's go down and check those out. There's our jalapenos. They're over there, transplant shock. We got a little bit of dill right there. We got some cucumbers on this little trellis here. And then down on the end, we have some kohlrabi, which I've never grown, but I want to try. So that's why we planted those. Now in this row here, Kelly's got a bunch of lettuces planted. Uh, we've been harvesting. It's already time to harvest this again. And then down on this end, we have some kale. And we have some spinach that is bolting down here. That we'll still be able to get probably one more picking of spinach off of these. Now that they've bolted, we'll pick those lower leaves out but it's time to pick the kale again kale's doing good there's a closer look at our kohlrabi there those got rained on too but uh, those seeds are a little bigger and they actually poked up through the extra dirt uh, there's only a couple couple little bare spots but we've got plenty there to harvest so that's what the garden looks like right now not a huge change but uh, things are coming together real happy with the garden this year this cherry tree here made it i was happy to see that uh, it flushed out with the leaves and then we have another cherry down there on the end and then the wild cherry on the end down there a wild plum whatever it is and this tree over here is supposed to be a fruiting mulberry that we want to grow up really tall and provide shade for the chickens um, it's growing well we got this from one of the neighbors it was just a, a volunteer plant that uh, grew up in his yard that we uh, he let us come get so so far the leaves sort of look like mulberry leaves but we'll know when this thing starts growing the bark kind of what I can see on this early stage looks like a mulberry but uh, you know if anybody can tell from these leaves whether it's an actual mulberry or not let me know if you know anything about it I've had mulberry trees in the past these are just small leaves I'm hoping when they get bigger they look a little more like what I remember Kelly's roses are well established now. They've got their root system down in there. If you remember, we planted those down through our predator mesh. We have two feet of predator mesh all the way around this outer chicken run to keep uh, predators from digging in. I doubt if they'll start back here trying to dig. They'll most likely try to dig right next to the fence if they try to get in there. Now this is, I'm trying to remember, Clematis. Um, it's finally taking off. Uh, it's growing up here. Going to provide some shade for the chickens. You see all the chickens up on the chicken tree this morning. Chilling up there. That was the top of a tree we cut out of the yard over there. More roses around here. Some other plants. I don't know exactly what she's got planted. But we've got to do some uh, mow strip around these outside of these uh, these border blocks as well. So when we bring the mower around, we can mow up to that. Now this is one of the wild plum, wild cherry, whatever it is. This was a huge cluster mess, probably 25 feet tall when we got the property full of junk and wire. Uh, it was pretty crazy over here. And it took a long time to clean that up because of the wire and everything that was uh, in there. But this is the little bush that we'd have we've allowed to grow back. I chose just one, one good stem and letting it grow. And we're going to turn this into a nice little tree here. But uh, this is all natural. Doesn't get any water from any irrigation. It's a native tree to this area, as far as I know. There's there's thousands of them around here but uh, you can use the fruit to make jelly or or whatever you want to make we have a peach down here that for sure made it it's all leafed out so we're happy about that and then that's another 
wild plum or wild cherry there that we're going to turn into a nice tree. We have some kind of fungus that's been growing on it that uh, keeps coming back. I'll cut it off and then it'll show up again. So hopefully we can make something out of this tree and that fungus won't take it over. And we've got our rose bushes that we dug out of the front yard that are potted here that we've been giving them away slowly but surely. And then our eastern red cedar trees that we got through the local USDA extension for a dollar a tree. Uh, I planted them in pots because I wanted to be sure the, the hardy ones, the ones that we're going to grow. You can see some of these are kind of weak, puny, kind of dying looking. So I want to get the root ball established in here instead of just that little bitty tiny root that they come with when you buy them. So once these trees get established in these pots, we'll know which ones are going to grow. And uh, we'll get those planted out and they'll have a much a better chance of surviving if we plant them just before winter and they'll get all the moisture over winter hopefully we don't have a dry winter like we did this last winter we were happy to get the moisture because uh, this unirrigated portion of our yard out here was starting to show signs of turning brown where it had all greened up with that heavy moisture that we got a while back so we were happy to get that. This will green back up again. We have probably three acres of grass that we mow out here in front and around the house and around the garden. This is our wildflower patch over here. The buffalo grass came up and has uh, got taller than most of the wildflowers but we're hoping when all these wild wildflowers reseed that they'll get thick enough in here where they'll kind of choke this grass off i should have come out here before this grass came to a head and like with a weed eater and cut all those heads off before they got mature and started producing seed but I believe it's too late now. These things are going to be dropping seeds all over the place. But we had a, a real good patch of wildflowers out here. Very, lots of different kinds of flowers. But I'm waiting for all these to go to seed. And then we're going to brush hog all this down, which will scatter that seed everywhere. And we'll get a big, bigger bunch of wildflowers next year. And next year I'll come out and take care of this buffalo grass before it gets too tall, before it goes to seed. And if, it's an annual grass. So if this stuff doesn't go to seed, it's not going to come back again the next year. So slowly but surely we just will phase this buffalo grass out of here. And this whole hill will be wildflowers. We've already had a bunch of wildflowers down here that have dried up and are gone to seed. This whole hill was, was all color, if you remember a while back. But we've got a lot more, a lot more flowers in here that flowered after that. We bush hogged all that down the other day. You can see our bees over there. I've got new bee boxes for them. I'm going to be rehoming them pretty soon. Not to a different place, but just uh, some new boxes in their existing location. This is all of Kelly's sunflowers along the barn here. This is solid sunflowers. So these sunflowers will grow up and tower over everything out here and, and uh, be all along the barn over here. Here's our herb pot over here, uh, thriving again this year. We've already picked some thyme out of here and some basil. Uh, we have some oregano and some chives, some sage. I think the sage got kind of buried by some of the other, I think the oregano over here. But uh, these lick, lick tubs, these uh, water wicking lick tubs that we've made have worked really well. We're quite pleased with them. If you're interested, we have a video on making those. You don't have to water them very often, probably once a week. 
uh, over here behind the the benzebo that's where i transplanted that rhubarb over here we'll see if it uh, takes off and then kelly has planted some wildflowers or maybe not wildflowers but flowers around the front here on both sides so these flowers will be flowering before long uh, we've taken out these uh, naked lady bulbs over here because they shade out our uh, strawberry shortcake raspberry that I planted right here. And it is rooted really nicely. Uh, we're hoping that, that that's going to be a nice bush to get some raspberries off of. We keep these water pans full of water out here. Our bees drink over here a lot. This, these two water pans will be covered in bees later on when it warms up. And this is one of the hostas here that was existing. And then Kelly's hostas along the wall over here are doing much better than they did last year. They've got a much better root system. And then you can see all these little yellow plants in the, in the lawn here. Those are honey locust trees trying to grow because this spot right here used to be a honey locust tree that was all hollowed out in the middle and was getting dangerous because it was so close to the house here. So we had that taken out and we ground it and I put some grass seed in there. Some of it's growing, some of it got a little too hot and died, but that'll fill in before you know it. Our clematis and our rose bush here in the yard has stopped blooming. This was just absolutely covered with the clematis flowers. It was gorgeous. Backyard came back nicely after that really dry winter. Remember our wind chime tree here that used to be a clothesline. Let's go check out Kelly's roses way out in the corner. If you remember, Kelly planted this there little area last year. And uh, she usually puts a little, some little annual flowers in there, but you can see the roses that she's planted are already kind of up on the fence and stuff. And they were blooming as well, but uh, they've stopped. So they'll probably put out another show of blooms a little bit later on in the summer. But we couldn't mow into that corner anyway with a mower, so we created this little corner garden here by the shelter belt back here in the back corner. So now we can mow around this corner. And then we have a nice little garden here in the corner. You can see out into our shelter belt out here. The shelter belt is worth its weight in gold when the wind's blowing and when it's snowing. It uh, keeps everything from drifting out here in the yard. And it's just amazing the amount of wind that the shelter belt stops. So invaluable out here in Nebraska. That's why everybody has one. You can see there's uh, a lot of dead uh, logs and limbs out there that one day we hope to clean up. But we don't do anything out there in the shelter belt, so it's kind of the thicker the better. So we just kind of let it grow wild. Now Kelly's been slowly working on these back flower beds around the house. This area here had a bunch of fern-like material in it. Uh, she wants to go to hostas over here on this side as well, so she's been pulling that stuff out. We've got a lot of that red brick stuff uh, as border over here that she wants to get rid of and go with the landscape timbers like we've been doing everywhere else. All these irises over here uh, we do not care for, so we're going to be rehabbing all of that area, taking those irises out and doing something different along there. So recently updated my phone, uh, the new Galaxy S22 Ultra is supposed to have much better cameras and take much better video and pictures. So if you would be so inclined, let me know in the comments if uh, the video quality is a little bit better noticeably than what you've seen before on the channel. That's our goal, is to provide you with the best experience that we can, obviously. And we've just about uh, made enough money from YouTube to purchase a drone so we can start getting aerial footage of stuff we do here on the ranch. So, um, 
probably, if you didn't know how YouTube works, you make a little bit of money off of the ads that they post on your videos. So uh, we've almost made enough to buy us a drone. Uh, again, we don't do this for the living, but uh, if they want to pay us for the ads, that's fine. We'll never charge you folks for our content. We're never going to do memberships or anything like that. So it's basically, if YouTube wants to give us money, that's fine. But uh, we'll dump it all right back into our channel to make a better experience for you. So let me know how this video looks, if the video quality is a little bit better. And we look forward to getting that drone footage for you guys once we can afford one of those. So that's the garden update, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll uh, do another one in a week or two and show you the progress and keep you posted as to what's going on. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. We're going out on the boat tomorrow, our maiden voyage in Nebraska with our party barge. We're going out with some of our family, some of our cousins here locally. It's going to be a good time. Even Kat says goodbye. Love you guys. Catch you on the next video.